You know when you walk out of more of a horror movie and you realize, wow, this could have worked a lot better as a really edgy comedy than it did a horror film because, honestly, I wasn't all that scared. That's how I pretty much feel about Splice, which is the movie I just got out of the theater to go see, pretty much sitting there, biting my lip, hoping that my uh, giggles don't come flooding into the entire auditorium. This is one of those cases where I feel really bad because it's obvious that the director, writer, special effects team and everything were really trying to make something a bit edgy. They were trying to create this movie that really delves into a lot of weird Freudian sexual stuff, uh, talks about scientific experimentation and cloning and, you know, all these really interesting uh, sci-fi horror topics, which I ordinarily love, by the way. Check out my review for The Fly for a great example of how you can do this sort of thing effectively. But then you watch Splice, and I can't help it. It feels like a big-budget Sci-Fi Channel original movie. The writing feels like the sort of script that you would see on a Sci-Fi Channel show. Um, the acting, most certainly, even though it has Adrian Brody in it, who arguably is a very good actor, it, they can't seem to deliver these lines. And who can blame them? I mean, this entire screenplay, for what it's worth, is pretty bad. And regardless of what kind of actors you got the dialogue would still sound pretty terrible. You get moments like, what was that? And then Adrian Brody turns around and goes, says, a mistake. A sort of very obvious, sort of stilted, thematic dialogue that doesn't come across very well when you're trying to develop characters who are supposed to be real people. And one of my other complaints is that the entire concept of this film is supposed to be around um, creating, st stepping into God's domain. Scientists going beyond the call and pretty much creating new life forms and and such, that sort of a concept. But you're entering into this with characters that seem like overgrown hipsters. Now, I don't know any scientists in my own life, so maybe it's just the fact that I haven't hung out with them enough. But you go into their apartment and there's like an overblown anime poster behind their bed and there's all this weird uh, knickknacks and they just don't come across as very scientifically minded people to me, especially when they go into work with like weird designer clothes on and stuff. I mean, under their lab coat, they have like these like bizarre t-shirts and stuff. I'm sort of sitting here going, maybe, maybe it's good that they're trying to get out of the whole, well, these are scientists and they're very serious kind of people sort of mindset, but these people are pretty far up. They're doing genetic work for Christ's sakes. I'd imagine that, you know, maybe they'd be a bit more serious, that maybe they would talk a bit more technically than your average ordinary people. And most of the time, the two actors who play the main roles, Adrian Brody and some other chick that I can't remember the name of, when they talk about scientific endeavors, I don't believe they have any idea what the hell they're talking about. I mean, they just sort of say, oh, let's just put the genetic thing in here and then watch as the multiplicity ha effect happens and the 3.153-6 develops into stage five. And I'm sitting here going, you're just reading... The memorized dialogue in your head. That's all that's going on. I don't honestly believe they have any idea what they're talking about or that the writer really knows all that much that he's writing about. What's always important with science fiction is that even if it's phony sci-fi, like, you should be able to follow along with it decently. The technobabble should make sense. In this case, it's just technobabble, and it's of the worst variety. I mean, I'm no, I'm no scientist, so I can't know whether all of this is true, but I can lay you odds that 99.9% of the crap that they're spewing is bullcrap. And it's a fantasy, so it's okay that it's bullcrap, but I should at least, within the context of the film, buy into it and go, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. They end up creating this being, and that's when the movie actually starts to get a little bit interesting. Still pretty bad, but you have this creature that they're having to take care of because they weren't meant to do it. They weren't supposed to do it. So they're keeping it uh, locked away in the lab. Lord help me, I don't know how the hell that they do that because, you know, it's making loud noises and clashing around anywhere. It's unbelievable to think that these people could hide this genetic experiment for so long. And the woman scientist, played by the woman that I can't remember the name of once again, ends up pretty much treating the thing like a daughter. And the Adrian Brody character at first is sort of like, yeah, I don't like this thing, man. We weren't supposed to do this. Let's kill it and drown it and whatever. And then later on, he ends up warming up to it as well, and it ends up developing into this really weird sort of bizarre character study where these two very messed up people end up trying to take care of this monster or what ends up developing into a monster. One of the interesting keynotes here, and I think it's part of what 
makes me go a little bit easier on the film is the fact that they really go into a lot of very freaky sort of sexual psychology in this movie. There's a lot of very Freudian freak-out sort of moments. I'm not going to give anything away, but there's a lot of very squeamish, uncomfortable uh, sexual stuff that goes on, which, while I found some of it funny and I was giggling at it, at other points I was sort of sitting there going, oh my god, I can't believe they just went that far. And it uplifts what is otherwise a very sort of by-the-numbers scientists stepping into God's domain sort of story. And we've seen this sort of thing so many times that despite the fact that the special effects are pretty awesome, including um, Drenz, these scientific creatures name, the monster, has these really neat looking wings and she looks impressive on the whole. And all of the special effects are actually very good to the point where you don't even notice them after a while, which is really what's important with this sort of film is that you're looking at it, and you buy into the fact that um, all the things on screen are actually happening. There's no, there's very little of that sort of, okay, there was a blue screen here, and the actor was here, and then the creature was here sort of a thing. No, it all looks very fluent. It looks phenomenal on the whole. The movie is shot well. It obviously was directed with some style. One of my big complaints is there's no sense of tension, though. There is, it flows from one scene to another, to another, to another. It just jumps around, but there's no real build-up to anything. It just jumps right into it. All of the jump scares and everything, you know, everything that makes this sort of thing interesting to watch are all so obvious, and, you know, sometimes you can lead into it in a film like this. And even though you know it's coming, it still scares the shit out of you because you're like, oh, God, because you were waiting so long for it. And this, everything happens so fast. It's like, that's not what makes for a good horror film. Oftentimes, what makes for good horror is more what you don't see as opposed to what you do see. And in this movie, it just seems like they throw way too much visual stimulus at you when they're trying to scare you rather than leaving it up to your imagination. There's numerous examples of this near the film's end. And things get so, things get so morally um, effed up at the end that you just can't help but admire you know, the fact that they did go as far with it as they did, and there's some really good concepts at the uh, last third of this film's running time, but besides that, you know, it, it's just so poorly done that I couldn't recommend it to just about anybody. I would recommend it if you're going to be sitting down at home with the DVD, um, gather around with a bunch of like-minded nerds, and just laugh your ass off, because that's really all this is good for. There's some memorable... Um, unintentionally funny moments. Besides that, you know, it's not worth anybody's time or money. Um, the actual critical score, I think I would give it a one and a half out of four. It's very below average horror fluff crap. Uh, my actual critical score, I would say a two out of four, because honestly, I was never particularly bored more than I was just offended and insulted most of the time. So, you know, it's not completely terrible, but okay, what am I saying? Yeah, it is pretty terrible.